Temples must be in the hands of people who care for the temples, for people for whom this is about their life. Just tell… let me just narrate one story. For example, the Ranganatha Swami temple in uh, Tiruchunapalli. In 1323, when uh, Malik Kafur raided this temple, already it was raided about twelve years before that, so they were warned about this when Malikafur came, they took away all the jewels and the… Uh, you know, whatever they had to protect the devotees took it away so that the invaders don't take it. So the Malikafur and his army camped inside the temple. They cooked beef and uh, they had their festivals inside and all kinds of things happened there. And then uh, they slaughtered twelve thousand people, twelve thousand people. I want you to understand this, twelve thousand people were slaughtered inside the temple. But the main deity to save it, well, the priest took it and ran away to Madurai. When he was leaving, because they would catch him, a certain woman, her name is Velai, she danced for this commander to keep him distracted and she seduced him, kept him busy for one or two hours so that the priest can escape. Then she told him, she knows where the gold and other uh, valuables are. And she took him up the tower and she pushed him off from there and he died. And then she also jumped and gave up her life. This is how temples have been preserved. And now, our own governments elected by us, running them down, this is simply… Uh, this is simply not okay. Seventy-five years of independence we are talking about. If really the word independence has to mean something to us, to the majority community, eighty-seven percent of the population in Tamil Nadu, if the word independence has to mean something to us, you have to first liberate these temples from government administration and governance. They don't have to administer and govern these temples. They always… laws are there if something wrong happens. For everything there is a law, the existing laws can manage those aspects.